Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Middle East Midnight Session Season Two. So yeah, um, I think we've brought this topic a lot of times during this season, but you know how in Episode Five I was saying that I was still grappling with like losing one of arguably my closest friends and that I can't do anything about it because you know you gotta support him you gotta be a cheerleader at such a pivotal time of his life but you know I was I I am still like coming to terms with a lot of things having to get used to you know not doing like everything that we used to do and it's hard like I wish it was that easy to just like do it in a snap of a finger like oh okay that's it uh we're not friends anymore like, I wish it was that easy to do. And yeah, yesterday I was at my uh, now former internship office somewhere around Manila. And on my way there, I was just like thinking, oh, I kind of wanted to date him. But at the same time, I'm not really I'm not really inclined to do so because I kind of don't want to be a bother and I kind of shed tears but like I opened up to my seniors about everything that happened during my internship and how he knew everything as he was my internship advisor but more than anything he's a friend of mine you know and I'm just thinking like it's it's just a week away like my birthday is a week away from now and I feel sad that you know he he won't get to celebrate it with me i don't know how i feel about it like i have been a mess since the year began this year began because like people i knew i knew i was going to deal with the loss but I never expected it to be this soon I mean I know I know for a fact that you know we're friends still but it's hard to um it's hard to Uh, what do you call this like it's hard to get used to the things that you used to do it's hard to even think of the place where you used to talk a lot and you know th they're not there anymore I mean it's not like the grief is like the grief you feel when you literally lose a loved one in like the most literal sense of the word it's it's still heartbreaking you know it's still like you still have to deal with it uh to not really accept it but like just come to terms with it because it's hard to like just accept that oh our time's up you know it's it's just not that easy you know 
and when I think about it I really miss like doing the mundane things that we used to do we just like goofed around like I would just check if he's there like okay he's there and not that I would want to talk to him but like just check if you know he he's there see if he's doing well doing okay and you know I, I can't even do that anymore I can't even check on him see if he's doing fine and all because he's not there and I was low I was actually like low-key resenting him because he has friends of his own and I'm just like god I am the oddball I am the oddball of like his actual friend circle when I think about it because I'm the I'm like obviously younger than he is you know and You're not used to, like, him not talking to you. You're not used to the fact that... You're not the one that he talks to anymore. It, it, there, there's just... Nothing you can do about it. Because he wants it, but... At the same time, you're just there. You're just there and you have to like pick up the pieces. You have to get yourself together. Because you know in your heart that he also wants this for you. But I just wonder to myself, like, God... It's probably, like, easier for him to just, like... Move on, cause... You know, he has friends of his own, like... He can, he'll get through it because he has friends that, you know, he could come back to, and... And he's, like, the only friend that I talk to on, like, a near... Constant basis. So, like, getting used to not being the friend that, uh, getting used to being, like, the one friend that you, you, you can't really bother. And I told him before that I want to do this because I don't want to be a bother for you. Like, I don't want to bother you at such a pivotal time in your life. I told him that. But he said that I... It's okay. You can still dump everything in here. I'll try my best. Like, I'll make time. We can still talk. And I said, I know. I said, I know. Um, I know, but at the same time, just it just then it's hard to get used to. You know, I'm actually getting emotional. Loyal. <laughs> I'm actually talking about this. Like, I have been an emotional mess since the new year began and as of recording this my birthday is exactly a week away that's the problem like if anything like
I celebrated his birthday with him. I gave him gifts, you know? But... I just think like, oh god, he can't do it for me because he's busy. But I know he thinks about it, but at the same time, you're not inclined to talk because, you know, he, fo he wants to focus on things. He wants to like set his he wants to like achieve his goal. And I think about it and you know I want to graduate as well and I have a thesis to think about. I also have an internship to think about and a lot of whole other things to think about but i still worry about him like yesterday as i was going home i just think oh has he eaten has he gone home i worry because it's the because i remember like he usually goes home at like 6 p.m Although it's nearby, I would say, but like, I'm still worried, you know, like... And people don't really understand the extent of the friendship that, you know, we, we have. It's hard to comprehend. I myself can't even begin to describe how everything unfolded it, 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 we, we, we just clicked I guess like we clicked more than any other guy and you know that that I felt safe with him that I felt safe with him to talk like everything about everything and you can't even do that now and earlier I was at school and when I say, like, I have been an emotional mess, people, I could not even, like, open the door to the faculty room without getting really emotional. And I just cried the whole time I was in school. And I was just like, I just got a sub. I just gotta leave the internship form here. Okay, let's leave it and go on our way. But at the same time, I can't. Like, you know, it, it, it's. When I submit my final report, I mean, my narrative report, we won't be able to talk until I actually am able to defend my thesis. It's just sad that we will be able to do a lot of things that we used to do. But you also don't have a choice but to support. In reality, I'm just like, I hate this. I hate doing this. Why are you doing this? Like, you don't want it to happen, but you gotta put a smile and say, Oh, it's okay. You're gonna be fine. But I'm gonna be fine. But like, how? How am I gonna be fine? How am I actually fine with this? I only said yes because it's you. But probably for any other guy, I wouldn't be able to say such things. I wouldn't be as supportive. Like, I still, like, wanted to talk to you about random stuff. You know, I still wanted to... I still wanted to goof around with you in the room. I still want to see you, but... Now, I can't do that. Because you're 
You're no. Chasing your own dream, you know? Damn, I hate talking about this. <laughs> And I was like writing uh, an entry on the Midori morning session, uh, Midori's morning sessions blog. You can check it by clicking on the link on the profile of this podcast. And I just think of a lot of the memories that used to that you know that 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 memory fill time of of your life that it was once such a magical reminder of how you loved being with someone like not in the sense that not in the sense that you know you you are um finding that ground that common ground and we and we don't have like a lot of common ground but as our friendship went on i just i realized there are a lot of things that we have in common it's just that we don't know them yet and you know like why are we why are we like people that talk about this like why do i talk about in this way it's because he has really like influenced me to become a better person he's influenced me to be someone that could be a beacon of hope like he has inspired me to become better and now that you know we are not talking to each other I I wish him everything that is good in life, you know. Even though it hurts, even though times may not be what it used to be. But you think about it and you just say, oh god, it was just fun to talk to you. It was just fun spending time with you. And this is meant in the most platonic way I could imagine. And that you're still finding the loss hard so hard that you can't even step into a certain place and not feel absolute hell for feeling such a moment and for like memories flooding back to you it's hard you know like you just wish like everything could go back to the way it used to be but you can't 
So now you're just standing there and you're just reeling from everything that's happened and that's ha that's like how this birth month has gone for me that's how it is going for me and we're just a week away from the end of this month and i just want it to end so bad because i don't know what i'm gonna do anymore i don't know the mess that i would become because i i knew i was going to leave him behind but i wasn't expecting that he would you know like do it sooner than i would probably ever predict and that i can't do anything about it but to just offer a lot of support and you know and a lot and i mean lots of good luck towards this way that's all i can do that then there's there's nothing that i can do for him now aside from those because you know everything is just like his own <coughs> like everything that he chooses is his own decision you know i can't really do anything about that and no matter how much i want to like protest that no i don't want to leave i don't want you to leave just yet like no we aren't leaving but no you left and it's not easy to just accept it and move on it's not that easy and that has been the whole month of January for me. And honestly guys, I don't I would wanna wish this on anyone. I don't want to wish this kind of loss on anyone. And I don't mean this in like the most literal sense of the word. But losing a friend Losing a friend is hard. Like you have to understand that people of different genders can be people of different genders can be friends but if people see it different that's on them and I was genuinely happy with the time that Chiaya and I have spent although it was short but we became fast friends and we became siblings that bicker all the time and you know I miss that I, I wish I could go back to that but you know I can't cause it's not gonna be there anymore I can't even step into the faculty room and not be filled with just so much emotion and so much memories from when we just used to talk like just talk a lot of things and then he would say oh I'm gonna go back in now cause I've we I need to do something and bye see you later you just wish it could be the same way that it used to be but now the question is how do I live without you <laughs> and that's it for arguably the most emotional episode of Beatrice Midnight Sessions. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye! <laughs>